Hi, and welcome to Art and Wine. My name's Jamie Bird, where we sit around and talk about art and talk to other artists and drink wine while we do it. Have you ever thought that you would like to get started at oil and cold wax, but feel like you have to spend too much money to do it? Well, today in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can get started by painting with oil and cold wax for right around a hundred bucks. Remember, if you wanna know more about art, painting, and just creativity in general, make sure you subscribe by hitting the button below and also hitting the notification bell. So in order to keep your budget right around $100, there is a minimum amount of things you can get to get, to get actually started in oil and cold wax. You don't need to buy a whole lot of things, even though of course I know we all love to do that. But in this case, this video, I'm gonna kind of show you how you can get started for right around 100 bucks. Our biggest expense where you can spend the most money is going to be on your paints. And there are paints that are truly fine to get started with that I think are great that are very little in money. So what I recommend if this is your first time in oil and cold wax is to just get a set of simple oil paints. Again, these can range anywhere from $10 a set to a few hundred dollars a set, but the idea is for us to stay right around a hundred bucks by getting everything. The next important thing is our wax. And the wax is something that can get a four ounce, I believe it is. This is a 16 ounce can and it's Gamblin. It's the one I like to use, but again, there are a couple of other brands out there. And if you're creative and you want to make your own cold wax, there are videos online I've seen to show you how to do that. So you might want to check that out. The other thing then is something, a support, something to paint on. Uh, I recommend an oil pad of paper, oil paper. And the reason why I recommend this is you don't have to gesso it. It's just ready to go. So if you are just starting out and you want to experiment, you can get some oil paper. I think this is the easiest, but again, it's totally up to you. If you have a pad of watercolor or acrylic paper sitting around, you can gesso that and prep it for oil and cold wax. So that's another way to save a little bit of money. The next things that I recommend is having some tools that include palette tools. And these palette tools are super important. First of all, they're great for mixing your, your cold wax with your paints. Uh, they're also great for applying the paint to your su uh, support. So I use them often and regularly. You don't need to buy the really expensive ones. I went and looked at some at, at my favorite paint store and I was kind of shocked that each one was very expensive. I've been using these now for quite a while and they're, they're fine. The other important thing is a silicone scraper. This is called a Messermeister, and this is the one that's probably the most popular that people use. And it's, it's literally for, I think, cooking that you use for scraping a bowl. And it's nice because it's got this metal thing inside here that keeps it uh, firm, but then this is very soft so that you can easily scrape with that. This is kind of what will take over the use of brushes. That doesn't mean you can't still use brushes, but this is pretty much what I use instead of brushes almost, I'd say 95% of the time. The next thing I recommend is a briar roller something that's used in printmaking. So you can get this in the printmaking section. And this is a great thing for applying paint. Then I also recommend some kind of tool, either a chopstick or this is some kind of a bamboo skewer for probably cooking. And I like this, it was given to me in a workshop by Lisa Boardwine, who I love. And if you ever get a chance to do a workshop with her, you should, she's fantastic. But this is nice because it has some flat area as well as this pointy area. So if I put it on the flat area, I get much bigger designs into the paint. So 
The other thing I recommend is some gloves. Again, this is a personal preference and a lot of people don't use gloves and that's fine. You do whatever you like to do. For me, it's about cleanup. I really don't like dealing with all this paint and stuff on my hands. So I just put these on and I'm good to go and I just don't care how much paint gets all over me because of that. The other thing that is very important is paper towels. You will need paper towels because, and you'll need a lot of them. This is totally one of those things where you are wiping paint off your silicone scraper regularly. So you're gonna wanna have paper towels for cleanup as well. Last thing that I recommend that I think we can keep within our budget is some painter's tape. Unfortunately, this is not so cheap, but uh, a small roll, just one inch, so that you can mark off the edges of your paper like this. And what that does is that when you're painting and you're, you're playing and doing whatever you want, when you're done, you can take this, this tape off. It'll be nicely framed. Here's a piece that was done like that. So I had tape all the way around it. And when I was done, I took off all that tape and, and then now it looks very framed. The other thing, if you use any other kind of cheap tape, it will have a tendency to maybe tear the paper off. So this is why most people will recommend the painter's tape. The other thing that is also used a lot in this medium is mark making tools. And again, mark making is numbers, marks, anything you wanna put on your, on your paper first. And the reason why we do this is a few reasons. One is to kind of just play around and have a good sense of play and, and being more childlike. But also what it does is it creates another layer underneath. And if, if, if at some point some of those marks might re be revealed through the layers and layers of paint. And what happens is, is it might add a lot of depth and interesting things going on in the painting. So, so it's a fun thing to get started. Again, you don't have to do this, but I think it's really fun to do that. It also helps you not feel really overwhelmed by a blank piece of paper. I do have a video on that. So check out this video over here and that kind of gives you a little more about how I get started on my mark making. So the other thing to make mark making with is just pens and graphite and a good old pencil. These are great things. And so I just use those things to get started. Again, you can do anything you want or you can even skip this part. This is something that you don't even need to do if you're not interested in it. So this is basically all you really need to get started in oil and cold wax. It's not as much as people think. And uh, it's a great way to just get your basics going. And then when you want to expand out, keep building on your supplies and tools. But in the meantime, just getting started like this is the way to go. You can basically get started in oil and cold wax for right around a hundred bucks. That's a big savings. You might want to buy more art supplies or even a couple of bottles of wine with all that extra money. Make sure you check out my other videos, including this one up above that has to do with mark making. And I will see you next time and keep creating.